uh, in let's be starting the transient response specification. Uh, before we proceed to the specification part, we need to highlight why we have to consider um, the under damped system practically for implementing the control system design. Uh, then we'll give the expression of the step response of the PD control system, uh, from which we'll be deriving the specification part. Um, then we'll conclude the lecture with the definition of the uh, different specification, which we'll, we'll be using uh, for, to improve the strategy response of the control system. Then we'll conclude the lecture. Uh, hello, everyone. This is the lecture number 17. We'll continue from the last lecture on the time transient response um, specifications. In the last lecture, we came up with three different conditions on damping ratio. When the damping ratio lies between zero and one, this is basically under damped response. Or when it is equal to one, critically damped response. And when the damping ratio is greater than one, over damped response. But for aircraft applications, generally we consider the damping ratio lies between zero and one. This is the uh, condition generally we use for aircraft control system. Now, I'd like to highlight why we have to consider the damping ratio in this range. Let me uh, highlight a few important points. If you, you, if you consider these uh, conditions, it was uh, first, let me highlight the first point, first trial response. Under them, systems more quickly to change in input or disturbances. compared to over them or critically them system. This first star response can be pressure in situations where a rapid adjustment are necessary for stability or performance. It's the one reason why you have to consider the underdam system. Second, improve handling characteristic. So under this, let me write, and under them, response can contribute to better handling quality characteristic. making the aircraft more responsive to pilot inputs, more responsive to pilot inputs.
this is particularly important for agile and maneuverable aircrafts. This is also a very important point why you have to assume the dynamic ratio in that range. Third point, reduced settling time. We'll discuss why, what is the settling time we'll discuss very soon. Under this, under them systems tend to settle to the final value more quickly. Then over damp systems. This is this characteristic also is desirable in applications where minimizing settling time is a priority. Put point enhanced sensitivity. to control inputs. Under them, systems exhibit oscillatory behavior. This is already we've discussed how it is oscillated behavior arises for the under dam system behavior in their response. These oscillations can enhance the sensitivity of the control system to small inputs. It's a very, very important point. So if you use the this kind of system, it will be the sensitivity of the control system to small input will be increased, enhanced, allowing final or finer control and shift point we can write. Stability margins. The under dam system systems response can provide. better stability margin. In certain situations, making the system
بس فون تو انستابلیٹی So these are the points why you have to use, consider the damping ratio should be in this range. But it is depends also in some situation may change, but most of the cases we uh, generally consider the damping ratio in this range. Also there are another point can be the control authority because if you want to consider damping ratio higher, so there will be control authority will be here, requirement will be increased. Uh, because to, to provide that kind of damping to the system, you should have that kind of control uh, power in the system. That is another reason maybe. Okay, uh, let's go back to our, the dynamic system, what you have considered before. So we had the transfer function Okay, well, now on we'll, you will consider the damping ratio in between 0 and 1 under damp system. Under damp systems. So, based on the above points, we are going to consider the damping ratio should be in this range. Now, the transfer function we had Ys upon Rs equal to omega n square divide s square plus 2 theta omega n s plus omega n square. So as we discussed that uh, will be considered the step command in the system. So uh, we will assume r of t equal to 1 a step command And we'll see how the response going to be for this step command. And if you take the Laplace transform, R of S equal to 1 upon S. And for this R S, the step response, the step response, why the step? Because the command is 1 by S, step command. The step response. step response is given by y of s omega n square s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square into 1 upon s. And now if you use the partial fraction afterwards, we can expand y of s in a partial fraction y of s equal to 1 upon s s plus 2 theta omega n divided by s square plus 2 theta omega n s plus omega n square. Further, we can extend this term equal to light 1 of 1 is minus s plus zeta omega n divided by s square 2 zeta omega n is plus omega n square minus Zeta omega n divided by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. Mm -hmm. So we can expand this expression, this form. Now let's compute the denominated part uh, in this term and in this term. We can, we can expand that term again. s squared. So we are trying to simplify this expression so that we can apply the inverse Laplace terms transform and we can get a nice form. S squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square equal to can write S squared plus 
to zeta omega n s plus zeta square omega n square plus omega n square minus zeta s square omega n square. We can write in this form. And from this, we can further write s plus zeta omega n square plus omega n we can take common square one minus zeta square and from this we can write further this is we know we already had omega d equal to for the under dam system we had omega n root over one minus zeta square that is the expression we had so if you take omega d square, you can write omega n square into one minus zeta square. So in place of this, we'll substitute omega d square s plus zeta omega n square plus omega d square. Now, if you substitute this expression in the in equation number, let me write this equation number one. Substituting the above expression, the above in equation one yields, we can write y of s equal to one upon s minus s plus zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n square plus omega d square omega d square and minus zeta omega n by omega d omega d s plus zeta omega n yes omega n square plus omega d square so we have multiply omega d here in both sides in the denominator and numerator to make the things in more simplified form. And taking inverse Laplace transform, taking the inverse Laplace transform yields okay y of t equal to minus 1 minus e to the r minus zeta omega and t cos omega d t plus c we can take minus common so it will be plus so zeta omega n divided by omega d sine omega d so this is the expression the expression for step response in time domain. So here basically we have used the Laplace transform of e to the r minus a t sine omega t. If we take Laplace transform, we have omega divided by s plus a square plus omega squared and if we have e to the r minus a t cos omega t if you take laplace in if you take laplace transform we can get s plus a s plus a square plus omega square okay, so if you take the inverse laplace from transform you'll get this expression so this is these are the terms we have used in the equation number two. This is the equation number two, and the equation number one. Now we have our step response. 
of the second order system. And on this system, we'll be defining the specification. What are the specification will come up? Uh, let me define what are these specifications, then we'll find those exp the, the expression of those specifications. Um, based on the, let me write, based on the init step response. Why is unit step? Because we have we have taken R of T equal to one unit step. This is the expression we have taken. Let's say our unit step. Unit step responds a number of different specifications may be given as the first specification we are going to derive is rise time which is denoted by tr uh, let me define what is this the time taken for the step response step response to first and it's a final value. In response plot will so will be showing how it look like, how we'll find this rise time. Just after some time we'll be showing this. Another specification peak time. RTP, the time taken to first as if the peak value or the peak response and specification we have maximum overlooked we did it by mp the maximum percentage overshoot from the final pattern Fourth specification will have settling time. TS. The time taken for the output to get within. Two percent of the final value. We'll assume two percent. Maybe some cases there are different system, different percentage used, but we'll be two percent final value and stay there. Now um, we'll see. Um, we'll see how this. Uh, a uh, specification can be seen in the response plot. Let me go to new figure. Let's assume we have a response, this time axis, and the step response y of t. And since we are assuming step command, so we are having the final value My aircraft should maintain this final value. For example, let me write Y final. Okay, this is Y final. And uh, the response I'm having 
starting from here, this goes like this, and it is something like this. Now, as for the definition, first let's go to write time. The time taken for the response to first reach the final value. So here, this is our final value. So this is the response, this is the response plot, and it first reaches to the final value here. So this is the, we can denote, this time taken from this to this, this is we can denote by TR. And the second is peak time, the time taken to first achieve the peak response. So this is our peak response here, the maximum peak. So time takes to reach to, to this peak, we can denote as TP, peak time. And now let's move to the maximum overshoot. The maximum percentage overshoot from the final value. So in this case, this is our maximum overshoot from the final value. So we can denote this is MP. Now the settling time. The time taken for the output to get within 2% of the final value. So we can say, if you assume this is the value, let's assume this is 2% from the final value, this is this is the response and this is the final value. And between these two person error is there. So once the system reaches to this value, we can say, so this is the value we get. At this time, the time takes to reach this value, we can denote this is TS. So this is how we can define the specification for a response. Now that as a control engineer, the control system will modify this specification so that you can uh, fulfill your mission objective very, if you want to fulfill your mission objective very quickly, then we have to uh, modify the TA settling time. Or if you want to have less overshoot, less oscillation in the system. So we have to work on the maximum overshoot, how we can modify it. Or if you want to reach the final value very fast, so that we have to modify tier. So how the controls algorithm should be designed so that you can modify this response and you can get the better response, better objective. So this is how we'll be designing the control system. Uh, let's stop it here. We'll continue from the next lecture and how we'll be coming up the expression of this specification using uh, these uh, definitions. Thank you.